स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. In this second half of this uh, lecture discourse on optimal control theory and solution of uh, optimal controls via con calculus of variations, I am going to look at problems involving constrained optimization, and mainly with the introduction of uh, the Hamilton-Jacobi-Bellman equation. So, today's topic of discussion. will be the following we have the pontryagin we are going to look at the constrained minimization or also known as the pontryagin the pontryagin minimum principle also known as the constrained the constrained optimization or i am going to denote this uh, principle we will see what this rule is denote this by the rule pmp and i am also going to uh, discuss our uh, derivation as well as the use of hamilton jacobi bellman equation uh, notice that this equation will be very similar so this equation will be very similar to our hamilton jacobi equation H J B. Okay, so uh, let let us recall some of the concepts that we have covered in the last class. Mainly, we have done unconstrained optimization, that is, op, uh, uh, unconstrained minimization via the introduction of the Hamilton Hamiltonian or the Pontryagin H function. Okay, so so far we have done unconstrained unconstrained optimal unconstrained optimal control and we see that uh, for this setup we form uh, i am going to quickly recall our solution methodology we form the hamiltonian h which is equal to x bar u bar lambda t which is v of x bar u bar t plus lambda times f of x bar u comma plus well uh, so where so in general lambda is a vector so where lambda i define it as my co state my co state function right or the lagrange multiplier and then uh, so we we solve we solve for the optimal control uh, problem we solve for the solution of this form so partial h partial u partial h partial u at start condition is zero so this is for our control function and then we had also two n equations partial uh, partial h partial lambda is set equal to x bar dot this is also at start condition and uh, finally we have so we have partial h partial x with a minus sign this is at start condition is lambda bar dot uh, this is also at start condition right okay so the first equation is my control my control uh, relation the second equation is my my state relation which gives me my state vector state relation and my uh, my third equation is my co state my co state relation which gives me my uh, my lagrange multiplier notice we have one relation given for the control we have n relations for uh, for the state relations and we have n equations for the co state relations right okay and so and and plus uh, we also had the natural boundary condition natural boundary conditions which are uh, partial s 
partial x minus lambda uh, this is uh, times. So, this is star times delta x f plus h plus partial s partial t uh, at start condition times delta delta t f right. So, this is set equal to 0. So, this was in summary our total uh, the, the total methodology of solving our unconstrained optimal control problem. So, now suppose on top of that we have we place some restriction or we have some restriction uh, on the control variable. So, then how to approach such a problem? So, this question now is suppose suppose we place restrictions we place restrictions on controls on our control function uh, let us say u bar of t and let me let me denote the, the, the restriction as the maximum value of u cannot exceed let us say the, the maximum or, or the magnitude of the control function cannot exceed a certain quantity. Suppose we have we place this particular restriction. Uh, or or component wise component wise what i see is the following uj uj minus less than uj of t is less than uj uh, uj plus right so uj minus is less than equal to uj of t is less than uj plus right so component wise we have the following restriction. So, now we cannot assume any more that the variation in our control uh, function is arbitrary. So, cannot assume we now cannot assume uh, assume that uh, the, the control variation delta u uh, delta u is arbitrary right. So, we cannot assume that the control variation delta u is arbitrary and so which means uh, what shall we do in this case. Now, notice that so far we have been optimizing our performance index or functional by setting the first variation equal to 0. The moment we have a constraint on the control variable we cannot set uh, the equality condition, but certainly we would like the first variation to be non negative right. So, so the idea is the necessary condition the necessary condition is now changed as follows. So, the necessary condition for uh, for uh, u star to minimize the necessary condition for u star to minimize uh, j will be uh, the first variation the first variation uh, partial j of u star comma delta u delta u uh, delta u is greater than equal to 0. So, no longer we can assume an equality. So, we have to assume an inequality. Okay. So, let me call this condition as a and and uh, so, so what have we got? So, we can now break down this condition A into two parts. Suppose we fall back into our uh, unconstrained case or uh, our optimal u is found by taking the derivative or it is within the constraint, then this inequality is re reduces to the strict equality. Otherwise, if the maximal or the sorry the minimal u or the minimal control is found on the boundary, then we have to solve the inequality. Okay. So, what I have said is the following. So, A so A is valid A is valid if if my optimal control u star lies on uh, the boundary. So, this is the so we have to check the boundary values along with the interior values. So, it lies on the boundary or uh, is constrained right constrained. Right or uh, nay, and and in this case, 
well so it satisfies a star or the other issue is that the first variation is 0 is 0 if if u star of t lies within within the boundary u star of t lies within the boundary or has no constraints or has no constraints ok. So, what have we got is that we can use our regular uh, conditions that the first variation is 0 if u star lies within the boundary uh, or, or uh, there are no constraints on u which is unconstrained problem or we can impose the inequality if u is constrained or u lies on the boundary. So, let us look at this sort of a problem. So, recall that recall that my first variation was as follows the first variation of the performance index was uh, del j at u star comma delta u this was integral t 0 to t f of partial h partial x bar plus lambda dot lambda dot of delta x plus partial h partial u times delta u and a plus. So, this was all the variations that we had partial h partial lambda minus x bar dot uh, times delta lambda right. So, this was the, the last one was uh, the state relation, uh, the first one was uh, the Euler Lagrange equation and the, the second one was the, the control equation right. And then, so this was all the integral over d t plus, plus I had partial s partial uh, x bar minus lambda at the start condition uh, and evaluated at t f times delta x f plus uh, h plus partial s partial t uh, evaluated at the start condition and t f uh, times delta t f. So, that is my the last two expressions are my natural boundary condition ok. So, so recall that when we were set setting the first variation equal to 0, we had 1, 2, 3 and 4, 4 conditions set equal to 0. So, now we are again going to set all but one condition equal to 0 that is this quantity which I am circling ok. Why? Because no longer the Hamiltonian, the optimal Hamiltonian can be found by differentiating the Hamiltonian with respect to u because the derivative on the boundary does not exist. So, we are including the boundary values of the constraint variable u. So, which means the following. So, how to approach? So, so, what I have is, so let me call this, so what I just said is the following. So, this is my, my relation A, this is my relation B and this is my relation C and these are my relations, these are my relations, this boundary condition are my relation D ok. So, in my constrained optimization, in constrained optimization, what I have is that A C, well what have I named? Yes, A C D, A C D they are all set equal to 0 except now B. Now, to, so what to do with the condition number B? In, now, we can not differentiate H with respect to U. So, instead notice that, uh, note that uh, instead of partial h partial u right at the start condition they can be approximated as partial h uh, partial partial uh, so so this partial derivatives we will approximate by a difference so this becomes the value at start condition plus u star plus delta of u so this is h at u plus delta u comma lambda star comma t minus h at x star comma u star comma lambda star comma t times delta u right. 
So, what have we got here is uh, divided by, uh, so this is this times delta u, right. So, this times delta u is approximately equal to the difference and and what have we got here is that, uh, uh, so what have, so let us now plug this back. So, so use, let me call this as our condition b prime. So, using, using b prime in the relation for, uh, well, let me call this as 1 the relation for first variation of the functional. So, using using b prime in 1, I see that partial, well the first variation of the performance index is this difference, this is at u star plus delta u minus this is at u star. Okay. So, this we have to satisfy that this is greater than or equal to 0, right. Uh, this is to begin with we had and then from here what we get is, we get that h at u star is less than, uh, is less than or equal to h at u star plus delta u. So, uh, it the, the final argument is that the Hamiltonian value at the optimal condition uh, for the constraint optimization should be such that it gives me the minimum value in the neighborhood of uh, of the optimal control right so uh, so the condition is as follows so let me uh, den let me denote u star plus the variation u to be equal to u of t right and i see that uh, my my minimum condition has now changed into an inequality that this is bounded above by u right and this exactly is what i call as my pontryagin minimum principle okay so so i call this well this is the pontryagin minimum principle so uh, so let me just state the the necessary condition that we have found for the constrained control problem. The necessary condition, the necessary condition for constraint, for constraint control, for constraint optimal, optimal control uh, problem, okay, or for optimal control problem uh, should should minimize should minimize the hamiltonian should minimize hamiltonian should minimize the hamiltonian and that is what my my pontryagin minimum principle states okay okay so uh, so let us let us now look at uh, the solution methodology starting with the statement of the problem So, the summary is as follows, we start with the statement given, given my plant condition x bar dot is equal to f of x u t and my performance index. So, these are my plant condition and my performance index which is given to be j is s of x of t f comma t f plus integral from t 0 to t final v of x bar u bar t d t uh, with, with boundary condition x bar of t 0 is equal to t 0 uh, and, and x bar of t f is equal to t f is x f and this could be our free boundary condition. Uh, find well the statement is the same find the optimal control right and and so the solution methodology the solution method is as follows uh, we will see that the only difference from our previous method for uh, the previous description in case of unconstrained optimization is now we are going to replace our 
equality where we optimize our control function with an inequality which minimizes our control Hamiltonian. Right? So, step 1 is form, form the Pontrigin 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 H function from the Pontrigin H function. So, H of x comma u comma lambda bar comma t uh, which is v of x bar u bar t plus lambda f of x bar u bar t. Okay. And then the step 2, step 2 is minimize, minimize h with respect to u right and we do that by uh, so u now u of t so h with respect to the function u of t which is bounded above by u uh, such that such that it satisfies the inequality h of x star u star lambda star t is less than equal to h of uh, x star u so any other control parameter control function lambda star comma t right so we have to minimize by looking at mainly looking at the boundary values the interior values are found as we have done for unconstrained case okay and then of course we have solved two n equations the two n hamiltons equation so solve solve two n uh, state and co-state equations, 2 n state and co-state equations given by x bar dot uh, is equal to del h del lambda at star and lambda bar uh, dot star is equal to minus del h del x at star. Right? Uh, so, these are my two n equations and along with with the boundary condition. So, notice my control equation is missing because that has now been replaced in step 2 by the inequality. So, with the boundary condition uh, uh, again uh, similar to the natural boundary condition that we had derived right? and whenever we have fixed point boundary condition they are replaced they replace these natural boundary condition. So, this is at start condition evaluated at T f times delta uh, delta T f. Uh, plus plus partial s partial x minus lambda bar uh, again at start condition t f uh, delta x f is equal to 0 right. Okay. So, then uh, the sufficient condition uh, we will just briefly mention is identical to the unconstrained case namely we have to check the second derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to the control uh, variable u and that should give us uh, and if the sign is positive that should uh, guarantee that we have found the minima. Okay. So, so, what I just said is the sufficient condition. So, condition uh, so so, the sufficient condition uh, for unconstrained for unconstrained problem was the looking uh, was to check for for unconstrained problem was to just check the second derivative right. So, that was what we have seen in our previous lecture uh, was to check uh, the sign the sign of partial h partial u right and if this is positive then we are guaranteed uh, we are guaranteed minimum right and for, for uh, well so that was uh, that was possible only for the unconstrained uh, problem uh, the derivative if u is found in the interior of the boundary we can still take this this second derivative otherwise we will have to again resort to the pontrigin function uh, 
uh, at the boundary values these uh, these uh, these derivatives are not uh, available and they, these are not to be evaluated right so these are only to be evaluated for uh, for for constrained for constrained problem uh, the the second partial derivative uh, to be evaluated evaluated at uh, at interior points okay we cannot we cannot just justify the second derivative for the boundary points okay okay so uh, let's let's look at some examples so uh, i have a very simple example to begin with uh, the example says we need to minimize so i'm given the h function so we need to minimize minimize the scalar the scalar function h is equal to u square minus 6 u plus 7 subject to subject to uh, u less than equal to 2 right and so minimize the scalar function h subject to this uh, constraint u maximum value of u cannot exceed so if we uh, well if we were to differentiate check that if we were to differentiate h with respect to u and set equal to 0 i'm going to get u is equal to 3 right so that is not a viable solution because it exceeds our constraint right so u equal to 3 is outside outside the constraint So, then we have to check the boundary values notice that h at u equal to 2 if we plug u equal to 2 we are going to get uh, minus 1 and h at the other boundary u equal to minus 2 we are going to get uh, 23 right. So, of course, uh, I see that u star is equal to min is equal to 2 is my optimal optimal solution right so certainly we will not get the derivative equal to 0 at u star 2 but it gives my uh, hamiltonian to be the minimum value okay so optimal for the constraint problem okay so then uh, let me wrap up the discussion of this uh, part of the constraint optimization before giving examples by mentioning two other points the first point is we have additional necessary condition two uh, two additional necessary conditions additional necessary condition so the first condition is if if the final time tf is fixed then I expect that the Hamiltonian does not depend on T explicitly and in that case my Hamiltonian uh, a at the optimal value will be a constant. Okay. So, if the final time T f is fixed and the Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian uh, H does not does not depend uh, depend on t t explicitly uh, then then uh, uh, h of x star comma u star comma lambda star lambda star is equal to a constant right and this is for for all t in uh, t0 to tf now, students should immediately recognize this additional necessary condition as our uh, version of Beltrami identity because if the Hamiltonian is independent of the independent variable, then we know that the Beltrami identity from the identity the Hamiltonian becomes a constant, right. So, this is nothing but the Beltrami identity. And then we have another ad additional uh, point to note that if uh, if my t, uh, my final time is free and not specified 
then the optimal Hamiltonian and the Hamiltonian further does not depend on T explicitly then in that case the constant is 0. The optimal value of the Hamiltonian at optimal control values uh, is 0. right? So, so, what I have is the following. So, if uh, if the final <coughs> time T f is free and not specified free and not specified the Hamiltonian the Hamiltonian uh, does not does not explicitly depend on t depend on on time t then then i have that the optimal hamiltonian is zero in this case so that is a new set of observation that uh, that is to be found right so if my final time is not specified my h becomes identically equal to zero that comes from the boundary condition, the natural boundary condition that we had derived. Okay. This is for all t from t 0 to t f. Okay. Okay. So, let us look at some examples. Uh, well, at this point I have some examples at a slightly later point of time. Uh, so, in fact, now we are going to continue our discussion on, uh, on this constrained optimization. Uh, by looking at another form of uh, of the optimal control equations right and then we will look at some examples